What's up guys, Brendan from Market Makers, your home for Wyckoff and Advanced Fibonacci Pattern TA. The markets are a ticking time bomb right now. When that goes off, will it be a good thing or a bad thing? Is the markets going to explode up or down? Guys, sorry for the late update today. It's almost 10 o'clock Eastern time. Lots of trading going on today, myself personally, and in the room posting trades. We had guys trading alts long, guys shorting alts, and of course I shorted the NASDAQ as well. And uh, guys, it, this is just crazy what's happening in the market. What a trader's paradise. I keep saying that, but it truly is. I've been trading for 20 years, and it's so nice to see multiple marketplaces you can find trades in. And this is Bitcoin, guys, on the daily, of course. We have our double top, right? We did a couple of things today of note. We just came down right before I actually recorded the video. Now I'm re-recording it because we did some different things I want to show you. We came down and tested the 144 again, just like we did right here. Okay. So we have this double top, and we have to be careful this double top doesn't break. A couple of things I want to show you. This glowing line up here, this is the 200 simple moving average, and here's your 233 and 144, and here's your double top. Let me show you something that's amazing, the symmetry in the market, okay? Here's the NASDAQ. I shorted it right up here, posted this trade in the room right at the top. Here is your 200 moving average. Here it's green. You see that? Your 200 moving average, your 144 and 233, you got just wick through your 144 right here. And then, of course, your double top on the daily time frame. The tech sector and Bitcoin track so closely together. Once again, guys, being up here in and of itself is a bullish thing. The fact that you're making shapes is scary, but you are still holding a key support line because you haven't broke your neckline in any of these markets. So that's something very important to remember. However, just be aware, this is precariously close to falling through here and then starting to descend, okay? So we got a demand wick here on this daily candle, picking it back up. Let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, actually, let's look at our indicators here really quickly. And we are still bottling up for volatility move. This, this looks like it has a couple more days to go. This maybe at the end of the week, we could see some, uh, let's see, we got to get to about that level. I mean, we could see something this week as far as a move incoming. And of course, we still have that descending volume, okay? That volume divergence with the price rise. Again, just very precarious. If we look at the four hour time frame. Went ahead and threw Wyckoff trend lines on here so you can see this. What I've been doing, what we've been talking about in our Discord as well, is shorting these up thrusts and playing this almost like a day trade or a scalp, getting a nice sign of weakness, a couple thousand point declination. Talked about this one again today, and this one came all the way down, testing the bottom of your range down here. This came all the way down to 44,411. Okay, every time we up thrust in this Wyckoff box, this trading box, we got a sign of weakness immediately afterwards, and as you can see something else Bitcoin did here was make a triple top okay basically the same as a double top you'd kind of trade it the same way and we talked about this yesterday here on the four hour time frame your macro structure is a giant double top right and that's your neckline that purple line for the Wyckoff base okay the floorboard here on the four hour time frame is your 144 and 233 as well so again you know, we got a nice demand wick on this candle, but we did get that sell off. So we are range trading, but we were up higher trading in this range above a bullish 45 angle, fell through it, obviously in a descent, and we are now trading in this range, a range lower. If we fall through this, I would imagine wherever we end up finding support, we would be trading down in this range and you're just kind of stair stepping down in the wrong way. Okay. So we want to see Bitcoin hold this level of support, accumulate, do whatever it has to do, and then look to move up with a sign of strength. That's what we're trying to see if we can get some, um, get some confluence with to do this. So let's go ahead and look at a couple different things here. Oh, my dog wants to say hi. <laughs> All right, get down, buddy. Making a video here. I don't want to have to do this a third time. Um, let's look at a couple different things here, guys. Uh, if we look at our, let's look at our volume profile here in the four hour time frame. If we zoom, pull us pulling some more candles so we can see this a little bit better. Get a little bit better range. This takes us all the way back to the beginning of March. Okay. So what we can see here, let me go ahead and pull this over just a little bit. 
we have our volume spikes up here in this top tranche. You can see, well, you guys probably can't see it. It's faint, okay, but I can see it. We have a we have good strong volume support right here, basically between the 144 and 233. And you can see your volume spiking out here where your support levels would be. And obviously we can also pull a fib, okay? So we can do a fib a couple different ways. We can go ahead and pull a fib from our base of where our wave started down here. If a fib retracement Pull that up to the top of the wave right there. We can see our 382 is at 44,170. Look at that, how it lines up with the Wyckoff line, trend line, and the 144 as well. The 0.5 at 42,908, and the 618 at 41,646, okay? So these would be your first three key levels of support that you'd want to hold. And, um, you know, again, this demand wick is nice. We got to see if price can pick back up, kick back up, or if we're just going to be range bound for a while. But I mean, I think, you know, Bitcoin led the pump as we talked about last week. You know, when we predicted that, Bitcoin led the pump on Sunday. The NASDAQ and the SPX followed on Monday, the Russell on Tuesday. Okay. So if Bitcoin led the pump, will it lead a dump if it does dump, or will Bitcoin follow on a dump? Again, you know, it's hard to say because the markets are waiting for a catalyst. This week, we also have the new inflation numbers coming out. And I know a lot of people, whether they're invested in the marketplace or not, are very interested to see what that's going to show. Let's look at our zigzag channel here real quick, see what we got going on with our channel. You can see we fell right to our support in the channel. You see that? So here's the base of our channel and here's our support line. So we fell right to our support. We down thrust through it. And now we're just kind of trying to hold this level. Let's look at a couple indicators while we are here. Look at the volume activity on the four hour. It's a shame this doesn't translate to the daily. Big breakout selling candle, high relative volume. And we got a lot of selling candles going on here, obviously, because Bitcoin did descend some, okay? And then let's look at our accumulation distribution line. As you can see, just trending lower and lower, solid red line at the moment. And we kind of just passed that support line that we've been at that we utilized over here back in March 23rd and now March 31st. And now we just passed it here on April 5th. So let's look at our volatility. Volatility is expanding a little bit from that descent. Not a, not a ton here. It's a four hour time frame, but it is expanding a little bit. And of course, our volume oscillator down here and just a wave of selling. So nothing too dramatic here other than a little bit of activity. Let's check out our Ichi Cloud, see where we're at here. I mean, we've, we fell deeper into the support cloud, obviously, since yesterday's video, right? So we fell deeper into the support cloud. And again, if you fall out of the bottom of this, of course, you'd be falling out underneath your 144 and your 233 would be kind of like your last leg here at the 0.5, trying to hold price in here. And again, the, the width of this cloud, this Kumo cloud that's forming as support, look how narrow this thing is getting because of all the price weakness, right? Because of the rolling over, rolling over, and then the dissension. So this is getting narrower and narrower. It'll be really interesting to see if Bitcoin can hold this up. We need a catalyst in the market, maybe something like better than expected inflation numbers. Of course, Bitcoin's being touted as an inflation hedge. I don't know how much of that's actually holding water, but um, we shall see. And let's look at, let's turn that off. Anything else? Let's see what the Alma is showing us. We haven't looked at that in a while. Well, we went to a red trend. Okay, so we broke our Alma moving average, as you can see, our new moving average. We had a nice little bounce off of it, back tested it here, and then we fell through it. And now we're in this red trend. And to get back above it, you'd have to get above 46,950. So Bitcoin's got some work to do. Let's see if it can put in some work. And let's go ahead and look at the one hour. One hour, you can see a lot of the uh, trades that we've been putting into the room with these patterns that have all been playing out, these Fibonacci patterns, over and over and over again. And here's a really nice dissension here. But this is all we've been seeing here. And you just see it so dramatically on the one hour because you can see the line of dissension, right? You can just see that going down. And again, nice demand wick here, trying to move back up into our trading range. Let's go ahead and look at Ethereum. Ethereum again called a bearish Fibonacci pattern up here at point D is where it reverses and Ethereum like we talked about yesterday does have a shoulder ahead and I told you if it came down it could start doing this 
do this for a couple of days here on the daily, you will have a right shoulder and then your neckline is right here at the 382. You see that? Right there at the 382. So if you start getting, if you get another candle here or two and then you come down and test this neckline, you'd also have the 144 and 233 of support. And you do have your bullish 45 angle here as well for additional support level and to give you a visual representation of when you go bearish, okay? So got to pay attention to that. Solana, Solana started dumping. As you guys know, Solana hit its nice, um, I guess PRZ, well not PRZ, I think it was the 1618, yeah it was 1618. I thought I had this, I guess I had changed the time frame on here. I had this on a daily, this is a four hour time frame. Let me see if I can throw this back on here for you guys. Let's see if we can find that wave so we can look at some of our predictions here. Go through so many charts in the room. So that's the 1618 there. It's probably a lower wave. Uh, not a lower wave. Well, that's the 1618. That's not the wave I was looking at though, but on the daily time frame looks slightly different. And um, uh, you know what, I'll just go ahead and throw it on the daily. Sorry guys, I'm tired. I've been up since five in the morning and uh, nonstop work, work, work. And then I got to play with the dogs on top of it and trade. And uh, all right, so let's do this. We can do our Solana like this. Where is there it is. Boom. There's your 1618, 141. All right. Go ahead and pull this out. So Solana start to fall down as well. And again, you have your 144 and 233 right here at the 1 fib at 116, right? So I like I was saying a couple of videos ago, I expect an arranging market for all of these assets to come and test at some level these 144s and 233s. And of course, Solana is making that classic pattern for if you do get a rebound back up for a double top type rollover situation that you have on the NASDAQ, that you have on the um, on Bitcoin, and that you can have on a lot of these altcoins as well. Or you can come up, make heads and shoulders and those types of things. It's all just part of range trading and being range bound. Let's look at Cake real quick. So I have it up here on my screen because I did a chart for the room. So Cake, guys, here it is on the daily. Cake, um, the volatility has expanded. But what you can see here is your 233, your 144, cake hit the bottom of our channel, came down, came back up along a 45, and now it was trying to make this cup type pattern. When you get a cup type pattern, if this thing stays bullish, you always get like a wave type, not always, but you get like a wave type retracement and you'll have your handle. And what you're doing is making shallower waves. This is a volatility compression pattern. You could end up doing it along this 45. And if Bitcoin does go bullish, Cake will end up punching through with a sign of strength, trying to tackle and defeat these different resistance levels. And this is what you can look for for Cake to see if it can stay bullish. This dissension is actually a bullish thing well above its 45 support line, okay? You want to see it retrace and make a wave. The next wave, you want it to be shallower, maybe along the 45. And again, you can just visualize with a trend line and you want to see a punch through, especially if Bitcoin gets moving. And I think that's it, guys. I have a uh, Harmony 1 trade that I shared in the room with a Fibonacci pattern here. And let's see what this descended from. So this was 18,166. I don't know how low this got. 18,166 at the pattern right here at the 233. This got all the way down to the 14,223. So basically, four cents. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is an 18 cent coin, okay? Man, I remember when I thought Harmony was going to take off at some point. Uh, it seems like it seems like only yesterday when we were looking at a lot of different thumbnails, guys, that were talking about two dollars this, dollar fifty that, and uh, man, what 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 a change! What a change nine months to a year can make, huh? But guys, this is your uh, TA for the day. Definitely check out our room. Uh, the link is in the video description. Actually, the link to our website, I keep messing that up, is in the video description, marketmakers.trade. Come say hi to the team. Again, we got an Elliott Wave Trader, GAN Trader, myself and Wyckoff and Fibonacci Trading and a Harmonic Trader. And I got yelled at by our Block State guy, uh, Ricardo. He's awesome. He owns a market analytics company, works with Fortune 500 companies 
days and he handles all of our block state information and block state updates and live streams in the room all that info is in the video description guys another video coming tomorrow gotta get some sleep take care everybody happy trading